Hello everyone, and thanks again for tuning in. I guess we would just like to conclude what the final assembly uh, may look like. So we got the uh, case done and our motors mounted. And this is what we uh, finally ended up with. So we're using an Adrena Mega and it's plugged into the computer through the USB port. Um, that's just a cord here. So the computer's running, of, of course, the uh, DCS uh, flight sim. So uh, we have a power supply that's providing the five volts to power the standby indicator with all the motors and proximity switches and relays and things like that. And that's actually uh, this guy here. And I kind of favor um, these laptop type power supplies because of the um, 2.1 millimeter um, power connector. So I got a bunch of power jacks and um, that's what I plug into with. So um, we mentioned before we were using two drivers. The L298N I mounted to the back of the uh, um, panel here along with the Adreno. And this other one here is kind of small, so it's just uh, free hanging. Um, so we got our proximity switches, and those um, are these two guys here. And uh, we just kind of made like a three pin connector. Um, we used some like breakaway headers, and we mounted those up here for a quick disconnect. And. Um, so we mentioned before the pitch and uh, the roll motor and the proximity switches that mount, that monitor those. And of course they go to the Adreno um, through the driver, of course. Now this other part is new. I had a, um, a particular motor that came with the standby ADI, but I took that out and put in a 28 volt um, DC motor even though I'm only driving it with five volts, um, it actually worked out fine. So basically, we just printed in an adapter um, plate here to mount this motor where the old one was at. And um, so we did that. And before we kind of use a transistor circuit to like drive flags and motors, but for this case, usually your on off flag is spring loaded so that if you lose power, the flag shows up and you have to energize it in order to uh, move the flag out the way. But for whatever reason, this one here, you need to drive the motor in both directions in order to retrieve and enable the flag. So we used a relay module, which is this guy here, and we used three of those relays. I had to use two relays to form like a double pole, double throw setup. And this relay here cuts the motor on and off. So when the flag is energized, this relay here is on for about 100 milliseconds. So we set the direction and then we cut on the motor and that's how we control the flag. So I guess we can demo that part. So I'll unpause the sim. So the sim is up and running and uh, DCS BIOS is already running. So if I grab this guy here, the cage, and I'm gonna give it a slight tug and that energizes the flag. So if you can see on the sim, when you pull the cage knob, the flag um, energizes. So let's see if we can get both in here. So that was basically it. Um, just using a relay module to drive a 28 volt DC motor. And we energized that guy for about 100 milliseconds. So we set the direction based on whether the flag is in or out. And then we energized the relay 
for about 100 milliseconds and that drives the motor. And um, just because in the cockpit, the um, uh, avionics hub control panel is next to the uh, standby instrument. So I just use that guy um, to wire in um, the standby ADI. And uh, DM, uh, Dead Man on the forums, was kind enough to uh, sell me some uh, uh, mill type switches that's actually in the uh, cockpit. Um, those guys there. So I changed those out as well. So that panel uh, turned out uh, pretty good. Uh, thanks to Dead Man for. Uh, um, let me buy those switches from them. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to uh, demo how that finally uh, turned out as far as mounting the motors and all that kind of stuff. And um, if I pick up our joystick here, I might could rotate this a little bit. So I straighten out the um, roll direction from <laughs> the last uh, video. And that's pretty much it. And uh, thanks again for watching and good luck with your cockpits.